Welcome to You Curious, your ultimate hangout for many science documentaries. It's been exactly three months and 20 days since the JWSD was launched, and we have been eagerly waiting for new updates ever since. The James Webb Space Telescope has had a peaceful fortnight after several months of nail-biting sky maneuvering, and some amazing early imagery. The telescope is now chilling, literally. The telescope requires extremely frigid temperatures to function effectively, which is why it has such a large sunscreen. Many of the telescope's equipment will be able to cool passively to between 34 and 39 kelvins, without sunlight. However, one instrument aboard the telescope, the Mid-Infrared Instrument, or MIRI, requires a temperature of 7 kelvins, minus 266 degrees Celsius, in order to capture data in the Mid-Infrared region. Why create a device with such a complicated temperature range? Well, it all has to do with the amount of light it can see. As viewed by MIRI, mid-infrared light may travel through 20 times thicker clouds than visible light. Because of Webb's infrared sensitivity, we can see what happens in the early phases of star formation, when gas and dust are actively collapsing to produce new stars. To become cold enough, MIRI requires more assistance than passive cooling, and the cooling process is a source of concern for Webb researchers. The cryo cooler has been flowing cold helium gas past the MIRI optical bench for the past few weeks, helping to cool it to roughly 15 kelvins. It is ready to enter the most difficult phase of its mission. The cryo cooler will divert the circulating helium gas and force it through a flow restriction by operating cryogenic valves. The gas becomes colder as it exits the restriction, allowing the MIRI detectors to reach their chilly operating temperature of below 7 kelvins. MIRI, like Webb's other three instruments, began to cool in the shade of Webb's tennis court-sized sunshield, dipping to around 90 degrees Kelvin. However, lowering the temperature to below 7 kelvins necessitated the use of an electrically powered cryocooler. Last week, the team reached a particularly difficult milestone known as the pinch point, which occurs when the temperature of the device drops from 15 kelvins to 6.4 kelvins. This process will necessitate a series of fast and precisely timed switches in valves and compressors, adjusted such that MIRI does not overcool or start warming up. The cryocoolers on the other hand, have extensively tested the procedure on Earth and are fairly convinced that it will work. MIRI will be the fourth and final of Webb's four devices to gaze out into space. Before MIRI can begin its scientific mission, the team will have to overcome a few more obstacles. Team members will capture test photos of stars and other known objects now that the instrument is at operational temperature, which will be used for calibration and to assess the equipment's operations and performance. Webb's initial science photos will be sent this summer once the team completes these preparations and calibrates the other three sensors. We cannot wait. What about you guys? Drop in your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to You Curious your ultimate space for science news and mini-documentaries. 2021 ended on a good note. No, sorry, a great note. On Christmas morning of 2021, an Ariane 5 CEA rocket blasted off from Kourou, French Guinea. It carried with it the largest and most sophisticated space telescope ever built, the James Webb Space Telescope. Since then, JWST has reached its orbit about 1 million miles from Earth, unfurled its tennis court-sized sunshield, and aligned its 18 hexagonal mirror segments. The telescope's first images are expected by summer however, NASA has released images from its early alignments, and the Young Space Telescope has already surpassed expectations. Over the next few years, the telescope will make cutting-edge observations, to help the scientific community answer myriad of outstanding questions in astronomy, and yes, including questions about the nature of dark matter. Dark matter is an enigmatic substance that scientists believe accounts for 27% of matter in the universe. But so far, it has not been observed directly. We can only deduce dark matter's presence by observing its gravitational effects on normal matter. Different theories suggest that there are two types of dark matter particles, hot dark matter and cold dark matter. Hot dark matter are considered to be particles that would have moved so quickly in the early universe that gravity would not have been able to confine them. 
Cold dark matter on the other hand, would have moved so slowly, that gravity would have formed them into small dark matter structures, that eventually would have coalesced into larger, clumpy ones. Cold dark matter simulations show dark matter clumping into small blobs, continually snowballing and merging, until large structures like the Milky Way are formed. These gravitationally bound blobs of dark matter are known as halos. Anna Nirenberg, assistant professor of physics at University of California, was awarded 39 hours of observing time during JWST's Cycle 1 to look for small dark matter halos. Many models, including the baseline dark matter model, predict the existence of small halos that do not actually contain galaxies. Such a halo would have no stars inside it. But then, the question arises, if there are no stars within these blobs of invisible material, how can we even try to detect them? Nirenberg and her team of nearly 20 scientists are using a phenomenon called gravitational lensing. Born of Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity, gravitational lensing says that matter bends spacetime, and subsequently, any light that encounters it. If light from a distant source travels through the universe toward Earth, and passes by a massive object, such as a blob of dark matter, the light will be warped around it. If the in-between object is massive enough, the light is deflected in such a way, that we'll see up to four images of the light source, appearing around the mass. Nirenberg's team will measure the number of small dark matter halos by observing a sample of quasars that have been gravitationally lensed. For those who do not know, quasars are extremely luminous, active galactic nucleus, powered by a supermassive black hole, with mass ranging from millions to tens of billions of solar masses, surrounded by a gaseous accretion disk. Now, detecting small halos would be a triumph for the cold dark matter theory, but not detecting small halos would imply that cold dark matter does not exist. Because, the light from these quasars must travel a great distance in an ever-expanding universe, it is stretched along the way, pulling its wavelengths into the infrared range. The mid-infrared wavelengths they are observing, are almost impossible to see with ground-based telescopes. We're going to be observing with absolute reddest bands that JWST can accommodate, Nirenberg says. These wavelengths cannot be observed by the Hubble Space Telescope, which studies gravitational lensing at visible wavelengths. And older space-based telescopes that can see in the mid-infrared don't have the resolution to separate the different lenses. Making these observations in mid-IR requires the high spatial resolution that only the JWST can provide. The kind of data that we can get with the James Webb Telescope is unique, and much more powerful or constraining compared to the Hubble. Nirenberg says, I really believe that this is going to be a huge scientific step forward. The James Webb Telescope is an ideal tool for this search because of its exquisite sensitivity to faint objects, as well as the telescope's abilities to take high-quality images and distinguish pairs of sources at very small separations. And thanks to its 21-foot diameter primary mirror, the JWST will see farther than any other telescope ever built. Future JWST science programs might further explore the mysteries of dark matter, whether through gravitational lensing or perhaps by observing statistics of galaxy evolution, that scientists can then compare to dark matter theories. We don't lack theories of what dark matter could be. There are a lot of them, Gilman says. What we lack are observations that wield a lot of constraining power over these theories. And that's something that the James Webb Space Telescope is going to give us. We cannot wait, what about you guys? Drop in your comments below, 